Without further ado, I want to bring in the host of the No Spin News, my partner. My, the, I'm the lead-in act to Bill O'Reilly on the first network, if you haven't seen it anyway, uh, whether it's DirecTV or Pluto or any of the places, Samsung, you can watch it. He's got a brand new book called Confronting the Presidents. comes out in September. You can pre-order it now on Amazon uh, so that you get the first copy when it comes out. Without further ado, my colleague on the first, Bill O'Reilly. Bill, always great to see you. Uh, before we get to it, the brand new book. I feel like every time I see you, you and Dershowitz, all you do is write best-selling books. I mean, I, I, when's this one's what? September? September 10th. I just got the galley, which is the advance uh, for the uh, critics and things like that. Of course, I don't send them to the critics. I, I give them to my friends. So I'll, you'll be getting one soon. I was going to uh, say, I'm, I'm going to keep going to yeah. the mailbox. Yeah, I'm, we'll, we'll definitely get you one soon. But uh, whatever I do, the critics aren't going to like it. So why would I send them a free book? I mean, that's insane. I know. I, it's <laughs> funny you brought this up. Obviously, when I wrote my first book, they started giving me this list of people they wanted to send the books to. These, these um, Washington Post and New York Times. And I was like, why yeah. are we sending them a book that right. they're going to criticize? Well, they want, number one, read it. And number two... Uh, in order to get invited to their cocktail parties, which is really what uh, Washington, D.C. journalism is all about, and also Manhattan and L.A., in order to get involved uh, with cocktail parties and social invitations, they can't say anything good about anybody who has ever spoken to Donald Trump. Yeah. If you've, if you've just said hello, the uh, left-wing press cannot say anything good about you ever. So that's where we are right now. I country. will say this. I, I want to, uh, I, this is not where I wanted to go with this initially, but I will say this. It's interesting because so many of the people in Washington, D.C. are so excited and enamored with getting invited to the oh. cocktail party. And yet you have had success after success after success, and you clearly aren't trying to get to the cocktail. I, I wish more conservatives would take a page, no pun intended, out of your book, because I feel like they're trying to curry favor with a press that will never give it to them. And yet, if you actually present a good product, which clearly your books over and over and over again are, you can have success. It's not, they, I think too many people in Washington feel like if they just suck up a little more, they'll have something positive said about them. Well, and careers are altered that way. Uh, when I first was hired by CBS News as a correspondent, I got a card that said CBS News Correspondent, and it was one of the highlights of my life. I mean, I had this card. I had reached uh, the Edward R. Murrow organization, Cronkite, you know, on and on, Mike Wallace. But things have changed now. And um, for me, I want the folks to a, watch me on the No Spin News and listen to me on a radio, 300 affiliates, and read my books. I don't give a whit what the New York Times or the Washington Post or anybody in Hollywood says about me or thinks of the product that I put out. And because of that, we have been very, very successful. But I have to say that I'm a boring guy, Sean. I don't care about the cocktail parties. I don't care about going to Cafe Milano or uh, some shishi place in L.A. I, I don't care. And so that gives me kind of an armor that most in the media do not have. They want that uh, favor uh, from these big uh, organizations. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. I think too many of these people, I, I said it around the White House Correspondents Center, too many of these guys are dying to get the invitation and go hang out with a bunch of people that are going to crap all over them. And if that's your goal or definition of success, I don't want you in my team on my team. I think that's the problem too often is that these guys want to go and hang out with them. They don't understand that they're never going to be your friends. They might rent you or use you. But I want to segue that into the current coverage because I was watching Fauci on the Hill. And over and over again, and I th th this is, you know, to, to parlay this back to your old school CBS, ABC days, here's a guy who comes on Capitol Hill and gets asked, hey, tell us about the six feet. You say that you're science. Anyone who questions you questions science. And now you're telling us that the six feet thing was kind of like, uh, I made it up. You know, it could have been 10 feet, three feet. Who cares? Six sounded nice. <laughs> and, and yet 
No one in the media, the, I, I'm watching the Today Show and they're like, Fauci who continues to come under fire from Republicans. And it's like, wait a second. Normally you guys would say he lied. He misled the American public. He's trying to rehab his reputation. Sure. And, and yet here is a guy who they walk away and say he's under fire and his family continues to be well, attacked. Here, here was the Associated Press headline on the hearings yesterday with Fauci. Partisans go after Dr. Fauci. Partisans. So here's a real story on Fauci. I don't mind that he booted the mass and the distancing and all of that. It was crazy. It, it was an inconvenience. I don't think he did it on purpose. I think he was just getting this garbage from other people and just mouthing it out. What I do think is pernicious about Dr. Fauci is that he lied about the United States sending $1.4 million to the Wuhan lab. He was in charge of the organization that did that. He lied about doing it. And now, yesterday, he admitted it was done. That defines anti Anthony Fauci for me. But he gets asked, OK, about these grants, including the one that you just mentioned. And he right. says they come in clumps. What do you want me to do? Read them all. It would be impossible. And one uh, of the Congress like crap. Rand Paul asked him flat out. Did the NIA give money to Wuhan? He said no. I ran a clip on the No Spin News tonight. Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entire, entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. Do they fund of Dr. Barrick? This guy basically is not accountable for any of this. He keeps blaming everyone. Honest. They ask him He's about his honest. senior That's advisor. Exactly. He says, well, right. that was just a title. Well, wait a second. You you don't know you oh, know, your you name know. was on Come on. He's just not honest. And when you get into the public service arena where the taxpayers are paying you, the most important thing you owe them is to be honest. I look. Dude, you're talking to me, Bill. I'm the guy that I could literally, every time something came up, Spicer lies. He's, you know, da, da, da. and yet here's Fauci. I never got to send any money to a country. I just stood in front of a podium, uh, you know, and here's a guy who lied, who his, the consequences oh, of these actions will affect multiple generations of Americans. Small kids didn't graduate from college. They were mass. They don't have the developmental skills that most Americans did growing up. And yet, I'm the liar, and this guy's a partisan. I mean, being attacked by partisans. Oh, Give me outrageous. a break. The good news is, Sean, that he's through. Uh, now he's an older guy. He's going to on the sunset anyway. But Anthony Fauci's reputation done, and nobody's going to be able to save him. 